All right, the team of fans, we are closing the door on season two. And I can't wait to do my video where I just talk about uh, season two B as well as the entire season as a whole. Because while it started off a bit rough with some gems in the first half, season two B just knocked it out of the ballpark. And I have to say, it did stick the landing pretty well. Season 2, episode 20, The Ugly Truth, gets a 10 out of 10. I think that each week, for five weeks, we just had straight bangers. Just amazing episodes, week after week after week after week after week. So, this is how we close shop. Now, before I jump into the review, make sure you take a moment to hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video. Hit subscribe, follow me on social media, and links to... All that stuff is in the description box below. All right. Man, what's better? The ugly truth or beautiful lie? That's an interesting question to open this review with. So picking up where we left off, Bryce is just in his feelings about the entire situation. You know, all my assets and accounts are frozen because I'm in association with you, Zach. And then from there... You have Zach, who actually comes back from calling the banks and everything to try to figure out, okay, what's going on? And it turns out that Bryce was the one that fucked up. And I knew it. I freaking called it. If you watch my videos, which honestly you should, if you don't for some reason, I said, oh yeah, we know the assets are frozen, but I think it's because Bryce did something, you know, because maybe he went over, you know, went around Zach's back to, you know, get the money or whatever for the uh, property that he said he couldn't afford. And, you know, he always said he was working for stockbroker. And whenever Zach said, was it Gary? He said, no, 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 it's somebody else. And it's like, nah, man, you doing some shady shit, Bryce. You doing some shady shit. And lo and behold, he went behind Zach's back to write a check. And he thought, well, it was a business check. Yeah, but it was linked to my account. I kept telling you, no, Bryce, don't put anything down on the property because I do not have enough money to cover it. Because, well, yeah, I mean, honestly, they didn't have it. Okay, Bryce kept saying, look, I know this, uh, this one broker or this one guy who can give us a loan. And Zach's like, no, man, I don't have the money. So basically, Bryce wrote a check unknowingly connected to Zach's account. So because the check was linked to Zach's account and the check was written from Rise Ventures, given the fact that Bryce has his stuff kind of connected to Zach because his stuff got frozen due to the humongous overdraft, everything got wiped out. So Bryce has a moment of, you know what, this is all your fault. Oh, I'm the one that fucked up. Let me look. Oh, and he says something about Gary because, yeah, he was working with Gary. But he says, Gary was supposed to deposit the check. Um, okay. So then he gets on the phone. And it turns out that Gary pulled out of the deal and didn't tell him. And that's why everything got frozen. So based on what I can understand from this. All right. So I'm guessing that Bryce went to Gary to make up the difference like hey zach and i have x amount of dollars can you put in x amount of dollars to cover the difference so we can get this property so bryce wrote the check from rise ventures which was linked to zach's account and from there i guess he put into the pot or whatever and the people i guess valerie or whoever is behind the deal took the money out but Gary didn't throw his check in the pot because that would have made the difference and everything probably would have been cool. But because Gary backed out, all the money that was in the pot got taken. But it's like, oh, but all this money you didn't pay us, that led to an overdraw. So basically, Bryce messed up. Gary didn't communicate. He was pulling out. And then that winded up screwing everybody else over. But... Bryce apologizes and he runs out of there to try to get things uh, fixed and Angela follows behind him. So in the meantime, Zach is like, oh, man, dude, no, I ain't got no money right now. And Fatima is like, I got money saved up. I can don't worry about the bills and whatnot. And Zach shut it down quick. 
And I like the continuity here because it shows that yet again, Zach does not want to be dependent on another woman who's, you know, happy about like, look, you know, I'll hold you down. Here's some, I got the money for the bills and whatnot, only to then turn around and throw it in his face, you know, about always having to foot the bill for everything. So his stubbornness there from past experiences is great continuity. I mean, this is the first time he's truly had more than enough money to be able to be the man of the house and take care of things. But now, you know, he's in a bit of a bind, but he still doesn't want it where Fatima is, um, you know, carrying the load. She does mention about being a team and whatnot, which, you know, it sounds good on paper, but the whole thing about, you know, my house and, you know, this, that, and the third, you sleep on the couch. That didn't seem teamwork to me, but I guess due to the circumstances of his mom being on her deathbed, it makes sense. They'll have these nice moments. So, from there, she does manage to, uh, you know, convince him to, you know, lay down, take a nap because he definitely needs some rest. So uh, we go over to Angela's place and Bryce, you know, he'll get help financially from his father in order to get things sorted out because uh, it's a big mess. And, um, you know, from there, Angela calls for Tima and says that, hey, everything is OK money wise, which is great because Zach, you know, really needs he really needs an up right now. He really needs a positive thing going on in his life. So uh, from there, she is actually planning to go to the hospital, you know, because like Zach said to Fatima and sisters, like, yeah, you like to sneak out in the middle of the night. So um, what was it? They had sex, knocked him out, and then she went over to Karen's place. In this situation, you know, hey, you go take a nap, and now I'm going to sneak over to the hospital. <laughs> But in any case, yeah, he she's going to talk with Jeremiah. And she does mention something that is foreshadowing for the ending of the episode about how she has something to tell her and she's excited about it. So over at the hospital, Fatima, you know, sits by Jeremiah to break down the situation. And I like the fact that she's definitely calm, understanding, but stern when needed. Like, look, I didn't come here to be disrespected and for you to call me out your name, uh, call me out of my name, but I'm here to tell you the facts. And it really did turn out to be a good scene she basically talks about how look i work at a law firm and i know you don't want to take your mom off life support but basically she pulled the uno draw four hey here's the card i could pull power of attorney and take the decision out of your hand in order to take your mom off life support and i know you get a check but if the government finds out that your mom is a vegetable, then the checks are going to stop coming. And the way you see it, your mom isn't living. She's gone. The woman you knew is gone. And I mean, she's going to be hooked up to those machines and whatnot. So basically, would you want to be laid up there, unable to move, do anything for yourself, breathe, think, open your eyes? And he says no. And she, he's like, so did you lose anybody? Have you ever lost anybody? Yeah, my dad when I was younger. So does that mean that Fatima's birth father is actually dead or did she mean it in the way that I lost my father when I was younger, as in my mom took me away from him and I never saw him again? So is Fatima's birth father dead? I don't know. But in any case, um, he does get to a point where he's like, he realizes what Fatima's saying and it's not about her trying to sway him in any which direction. And it's not about what Zach told her about him. It's about her just giving him the hard facts, him coming to his own conclusions. And he does have a moment of realization where he does apologize for his behavior. And i um, sorry for, you know, calling you to be word. It's like, yeah, just don't do it again. And um, I'm not really a bad person. It's like, you must think I'm a piece of, you know, crap. It's like, no, 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 no. I think you and your brother both did the best you could with the cards you were dealt. And he asked for a hug. And that was a good moment. So after that, um, well acted scene, well acted scene. So right after that, Zach is uh, up from his nap. Honestly, I feel like taking one of my damn self. I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> so Fatima actually comes into the house right as he comes downstairs. And it turns out, uh, thanks to Bryce and his dad and everything, all the financial stuff is getting straightened out. Truth be told, I pray to God that the same can be said when I get this appeal thing to YouTube because Lord knows I want my main channel back and running so badly. Sorry to make it about me. Back to the episode. Um, 
So for team on him have a moment where they talk about, you know, well, hey, you know, Connie was the one that uh told me to come over to the hospital to see you because Zach is just glad to have Fatima back home because of the fact that he knows he would not be able to make it through this without her. But she does mention that, hey, I think you should go talk to your brother. It's like, it'll take Jesus and a whole squad of eight, a squadron of angels to get him to change his mind about the situation. And it's like, no, I've seen some miracles in my life, Zach. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, Fatima, I know what you did. You, you pulled an angel miracle. I like that. I like that. So basically she doesn't want to say like, I went over there and talked some sense to your brother. It's like, no, just, you know, give your brother another chance. See what happens. So the doctor actually calls sadly and, um, Gladys went into cardiac arrest and he rushes to the hospital. Jeremiah's by the bedside and it's like, she gone, bro. So we really have a great moment because in one of the rare moments, as Zach put it, Jeremiah is not high. So um again this and a couple other moments as the episode goes on this this is this i just love the the way it was written because this is just pure black people this is how we do it's like let me know when the funeral is you want to let me know when the funeral is that that kind of stuff that is legit that yeah mm -hmm. so basically um he's like i ain't got the money for the funeral it's actually like, don't worry about it i got it and it's like look just stop by the house um Cause there's some things she wanted, she would have wanted you to have. And we have a great moment here. And I love what happens next. While some might see it as tragic is one of those situations where you can only help those who want to receive help, you know? And sometimes they, some people just can't be helped because they don't want to be helped. And in those situations, it, it can feel sad, but Knowing that a person chooses to live or deal with things the way they choose, there's really nothing you can do. You could just, you know, know that you tried everything you could. And no, I'm trying my best not to quote Bam from Family Funeral for another review two times in a row. But essentially, uh, Jeremiah got a bunch of kids too. Yeah, it's like, the only person I ever loved or who loved and cared about me is gone now. It's like, man, I don't hate you. I just hate the stuff you do. It's like, you know, my kids don't love me or nothing either. So basically... You know, despite um, Zach and Fatima saying like, look, we can, we know some people that get you the help you need. And it's like, you know, no, no, no. I'm just going to handle things the way I want to. And, you know, I guess they were implying like, you know, getting you a counselor and getting you off your addictions and whatnot. But basically he just wants to know when the funeral is. And then he's going to eventually just leave town altogether because like there's nothing there for him anymore. So from there, um, they stopped by the na old neighborhood. While Zach is upstairs getting, I guess, what Jeremiah wanted to give him, Connie and Fatima have a brief chat, you know, talking about his mom and everything and how, um, yeah, don't worry, Zach will tell you about the funeral plans and whatnot. But um, he comes downstairs and Connie, you know, you know, says, gives her her condolences, gives him her condolences, gives him a hug. Then they go in the car and uh, you, you just seeing Zach and Fatima smile. It's just a great thing after all the drama on sisters and the ups and downs of their dynamic during um, season two to see them back on one accord is great. And from there, um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Well, actually, no. First thing is when he goes, uh, comes back down, he tells Fatima's like, yeah, you know, Jeremiah, he's high again. And it's like, well, you know, that's just the way he wants to be. So it turns out that there's a VHS tape and I just love how just old this makes me feel because it's like a VHS. Where am I going to find a VCR? <laughs> and then for team was like, Oh yeah, we actually got one at the, uh, at work, you know, for like different cases and whatnot. So when it comes to like, uh, records and everything, so we can go by there and I'm thinking, Oh, Oh, I'm like, Oh, are they just going to go by the law firm and pick up the VCR or something and bring it back? Oh no, they're actually just going to, Go into the law firm, it's like after five, there's no one there. I don't know if that implied after five at night or five in the morning. I just know it was pitch black. It could be daylight savings time. I don't know. Or early in the morning. But in any any case, um, they go into like the meeting room of the law firm. And this took me back to like school. And I mean grade school where, you know, um, the person from like the AV room or somebody would bring in that big black cart with the TV on top and the VCR or as the years went on DVD player. 
um, on the bottom shelf. And then it would, it, hey, it's like, oh yeah, uh, the teacher, we got a substitute. We're going to watch Bill Nye, the science guy, or we're going to watch, um, you know, eyewitness or national geographic as opposed to doing a lesson so it was pretty cool to just see that throwback and i i love the bit where fatima takes the vc uh vhs and zach's like you know how to work this thing I, that just had me rolling i just love that so they put the tape in and it's an old video from a playground jeremiah and zach when they were kids and we see a younger version of gladys they're playing having a good time and um Gladys comes over to the uh, camera and the boys come over too because she tells them to keep playing. And I noticed that the little boy playing Zach, I'm like, that 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 kid looks familiar. And it turns out that I believe uh, Cairo is one of the Val's sons in real life. And I'm like, oh, that's that's cool. I love that. I love that. I mean, um, from there, we get the kids being told to go back to the playground and play. And Gladys takes a moment to look at the camera and say, look, boys, I love you. And I'm sorry. I'm just got to leave. Please don't hate me for what I'm about to do. And basically it's kind of a, uh, signal that, you know, this is probably the start of her addiction and you know, whatnot. And as a result, she's no longer able to like, you know, take care of her kids the way she wants to, because she's about that life now. So she leaves. And then Zach, understands now that she did love them and she did she tried her best and for now um it's a matter of zach trying to be the best person he can be it's like despite the mistakes of both his parents he just needs to be a better man a better parent a better spouse than what came before him and it's like, yeah, you know, I already am a father, but I hope to be a better father. And it's like, you are, Zach, more than you know. And it's like, wait, wait. And Fatima says that she's pregnant and the episode ends. And I'm going to get some flack for this. I know I am. It's just like when I spoke my piece about their engagement. This moment, which is supposed to be happy and joyous and something fans wanted. I can't truly appreciate this moment because of how much other shit is going on right now. You got the Heather situation with Michael. You got Karen and the potential kid that's that Zach's. And now it's like, now how is Fatima and this kid supposed to fit into all this, you know? I don't know. Like a, a cute way to end the episode, but I just... You know, I'm thinking about the larger ramifications because now it makes that it, look for Zach hooping and hollering over Karen at the salon. I understand why he would do that compared to the reaction to his mom's death, because like he told Fatima, I feel empty. It's like I don't feel anything. But in regards to Karen, like he said to Fatima, hey, you know what? I didn't even act that way. My mom died because, you know, that's somebody I really didn't love like I did with Karen. So. Now it's like, Zach, you over there crying over Karen, yet you have a pr allegedly pregnant fiance. Oh, man, that looks bad. I don't know. It, the timeline stuff just still doesn't make sense. My guess is that season three of Zatima will still take place before Sister Season 6 because things really aren't lining up right now. But overall, I love the episode. Great stuff. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.